NFC South, other side of 12. The Bucks set at number 12. 12 wins. Last year they were 11 and 5 in the regular season. I'm going over. I mean, especially with what I I mean, first off, we know the roster's amazing. It's the exact same. It's the exact same. I mean, it's young talent too. It's not like a bunch of old guys that they kept that are exact same. It's like, no, it's, yeah, there's a few old guys, Brady and Antonio Brown and Gronkowski. After that, it's all a bunch of guys that are still like going on the up and up in their career. And, you know, maybe other than Levante David too. Like it, but but like I I just think they're so clearly the most talented team in right. the NFC. And then it's another year of Brady in the system. Mm-hmm. And then again, what we saw from Brady the other night. Yeah, no. You know, it's just I, I just look at them and go, they're going to be able to do whatever they want on offense. Right. If they can protect him, and now he seems more – and, you know, you read things down there, he's definitely more comfortable in the offense. Sure. He's not, like, thinking as he walks to the line of scrimmage. I've seen him say it. I've heard Bruce Arians say that. You know, if they want to run the ball, they got a mean, nasty offensive line. I mean, they got, like, two run plays, and they're just like, oh, screw you. Stop it. Right. And then you can't. So, yeah, I'm going over there. I'm expecting, yeah. you know, number one seed type of stuff from the Tampa Bay Bucks this year. It was one of those where I wanted to. I spent some time diving in. I'm like, I'm going to find some reasons to say, you know what? They're going to be really good, but yeah, I'm going to say hard. they go 10-7 and seven or 11-6. And, and, like, what do you find? <laughs> Unless you have some conviction that Brady's going to fall off, there are no signs of that. There's nothing roster-wise where you could really – Dig in and say, you know what? This no. team's not going to be as good as they were last year. I don't, I don't think so. I, don't think I mean, so I think either. you're going to get some of those young corners that are only going to be better. Antoine Winfield's only going to be better. Devin White's only going to be better. Vita Vea, if he could stay healthy. He was only healthy for the last few games of the year last year in the yep. playoffs. He stays healthy. I mean, great Scott's Batman. I mean, come on. that's that's They're, right. they're scary. Saints at nine. This is a fun one. They were 12-4 and four last year. And people expect automatically for the Saints to be in the double-digit win section as long as Sean is down yeah. there. Nine wins to me was a little little low. I could see them being much better than that. I, 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 they're like, so right now we got, they're gonna, it looks like they're going to be away from New Orleans for a month. Yeah. That makes me like, oh damn, that's a lot to deal with. Yeah. I think they're a playoff team. I'm more of the push to barely over with them. I, I think they're I'm with a comfortable over here. You're with a comfortable over. I can see over? 11 you, you wins. Think gonna, you think they're going to like be a real force in I the, do. Yeah. I, I got, know. I think Jameis is going to be pretty good. I mean, look at the quarterback play last sure. year. It wasn't like it was upper echelon and they still what they win last year. They won 12 last year. I know. I know. And maybe it's an upgrade this year. Well, there's going to be an upgrade as far as maybe the openness of the offense you because go. Jameis be can more push the ball down yeah. the field and do those type of the things. The decision-making efficiency, we'll see. Yes. But yeah. I, I, I think it's a great point. That that's, That is definitely going to be a factor. I No Michael Thomas. I guess I want to see more Jameis first. You know, like, I'm, I'm again, I'm picking to be playoffs, but I kind of went to the barely over. Barely over. The barely over conversation here. So you, you, you know, wrote it in all undercase and in parentheses. Well, yes. Yeah, so, you know, they they got to uh, uh, they gotta play the AFC East. You know, that's a good, of course, a good, good group. They got to play a first place schedule as far as the rest of the NFC. Uh, NFC East, I get you. That's 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 favorable for sure. Um, I got so much faith in Sean Payton. I really do. But I, you know, you're trying to talk yourself out of the over here. No, no, I'm doing over okay. all the way. I just, I, I, I don't know why. I just can't jump on to like, oh, I think they're going to be 13 and four, or I just feel like they might lose a few games this year with Jameis maybe taking a few chances yeah. here and there. No Michael Thomas. Uh, I guess those are the things that are kind of uh, bothering me to a degree. But I still, still think they're an NFL, an NFC, NFC playoff team. Pete, what did you say about Jacksonville? Breaking news, Saints-Packers week one in Jacksonville. Right. I mean, what a great advantage, first off, for Green Bay, that you don't have to go to the Superdome and deal with that crowd to open the season. could be 110 degrees, though. It I could mean, be, yeah. Both I know. But yeah, I hear what you're saying. You know, that's just that's, it's advantage Packers that they get this opportunity, and it's one less game in a hostile envir- environment, which we know can be, like, the most hostile environment. Right. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I like the Saints. I still think they could be a – if they get a rolling, could be a pain in the butt in the playoffs. Like Marcus Davenport looked better coming off the edge. They still the same things hold true. Yeah, it's Sean Payton, Kamara. The offensive line is one of the best in football. 
uh, I, I guess I'm just going, man, how many years can they win the NFC West and just be awesome? I mean, NFC South and be dominant like that. So, yeah, I'm just going over. Like 10 and 7, I guess, is kind of what I'm thinking for the Saints this year. We've talked about this team quite a bit, and even on, on this show, and I think this one's an automatic. Carolina Panthers, yeah. seven and a half. Pretty easy over for me. I am too. I, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm picking the Carolina Panthers to go to the playoffs. A hundred percent. So, uh, we, you, have, you have three playoff teams in the NFC South. I do. Yeah, I'm going three play, three playoff teams in the NFC South for sure. They're just one of those teams where again we see it every year, right? I mean, a third of the playoff teams fall out of the playoffs the next year, and we get we get four or five new teams. Carolina is the team I'm going with to do that. And I also look at it and go, um, to me, for teams like this, the start of the schedule is important gain a little confidence and things like that. They're going to get the Jets at home. They're better than them. They got the Saints. Okay, we know that'll be tough. But then the Houston Texans, the Cowboys, the Eagles, the Vikings, the Giants, the Falcons, those are all their next games where I go, you know, even if they're not hitting on all cylinders yet and everything like that, those are games they can win. And I think their rosters are more talented than all of those teams there that we just mentioned other than the Saints. So, yes, I'm a believer in Darnold. I'm a believer in Matt Rule. And I'm a believer in what, just what I've seen so far. Um, you know, just like I talked to, like, Miami and things like that, just the look of the football team, they got it all. Now they just got to kind of get the confidence and go right. out there and do it, and I'm going to bet that they do. Three for three in the NFC South here, Big Lefty, with the overs in playoff teams. Damn. So that Negative leaves the Ghost Falcons. Rider here. They're going under. Pretty good Pretty what, good time to go under. What's their set at? What are they set at? What would you guess? They're just, well, I, I mean, I saw it, but it was like seven. Were they seven and a half? Seven and a half, yeah. that's yeah. too high for me. Right. I don't I don't even know where you can get that. They were four and twelve a year ago. What what, what is what does everybody look at to go? Cal Pitts worth worth two and a half. Wins. Or is it just Arthur Smith? You know, again, Arthur Smith. Like, I don't think that team's quite where they needed to be to capitalize on the way he wants to play yet yeah. either. So, you know, defensively, there's not a ton that jumps out at me. You know, Dean Pease. It's a new system for that group down there. They've been running that Dan Quim Seattle scheme and playing against three playoff teams exactly. in their division. Exactly right. So that's what that's what you know scares me. I don't think that offensive line is set up to just open up holes like for like uh, for Mike Davis, like Derrick Henry had. And uh, I love Calvin Ridley. Matt Ryan's still really good. Pitts will be really good. But, yeah, tough division. And I just don't see enough talent overall in the whole roster for me to sit here and go, oh, yeah, no, this is a bounce back year for the Atlanta Falcons. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.